Hello and welcome sports fans to Oswego, New York, home of the Oswego State Lakers. We're in a, a tremendous arena right now. Uh, Lakers versus Lakers as Mercier's College takes them on. I'm John Baranowski. With me as always is David Stearns. What do you think of today's game? Well, uh, actually, I'm more focused on how beautiful this arena is. We got ourselves a four, four-plated scoreboard here. We got nice seating in that bucket seats. Beautiful place. But as far as tonight's game, very unpredictable because I, I really don't know a whole lot about the Oswego State Lakers. But as far as the way our guys performed last night, I'm just hoping that the momentum will shift and stay with us and shift along with us into this beautiful facility and then go up against the uh, club team of the D3 champions of last year, the 2007 state champions, or uh, the division champions, the Oswego State Lakers. But their club team, I hear, from what I see from their roster, they have a kid from Germany, and they also have a kid from Quebec. So just having, just not even, or not alone just the player from Quebec, but having a player from Germany, obviously he has something to add to this team. I wonder if they recruited the guy or if he just came here and said, hey, I play hockey. Yeah, having, having someone from as far away as Germany, and Germany not really a huge hockey country, but they do have the uh, Deutschland Ice Hockey Liga, which is not, not a bad league over there. It, it's up there with the Swiss. It, it does get attention over there, by the way. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it, it does. play it so much because it's been a, in the news a lot lately. There has been a, a series of tournaments that have been, become famous because being held in Germany and that not such a growing population. But anyway, let's get back here. Yes, it's yes. Loprick. Uh, Fabian Loprick is the guy from Germany. So we'll be watching for him, number 14. Yeah, so there's plenty to watch here. Uh, it should be a fantastic game, and it should be great to watch here, here in Oswego State. All righty, we'll, be, we'll uh, come right back for the drop of the puck. Welcome to the ice rink here in Oswego, New York. I'm John Baranowski with David Stearns. Lakers win the opening faceoff. Definitely a lot of scratches going into tonight's game. It should be mentioned that Along this trip here in the two game away games, the Mercier's Lakers do not have Justin Henning, Devin Henry, and Chris Martin, who was taken out from last night's game for a pretty little brawl. What do you think about that brawl last night, huh? Well, after seeing the replay and watching the uh, kid's head bounce off the ice, yeah, I, I, can, I, I can understand that was a pretty good brawl. Yeah, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to comment any further as the uh, linesman goes down. He was smashed by Warren. Faulkner with the puck behind the net. He plays it to the corner. Chased by 19 Hawthorne. Dumped in by Oswego. Mercier's with it. He clears. Warren looks for it. Eventually we'll get it, but that'll be called offsides. He was a little offsides as the uh, puck was chipped up to him by Leon. Well, he did get a little bit ahead of himself there going into the zone, but uh, there are also some scratches here for Oswego. Uh, they are without their uh, forward Ethan Erickson, Josh Eliash, Chris Clement, and Josh Gagnon, and also Chris Thompson. Lakers eventually won the face. Oh, no, it'll be a... I can't say Lakers won the faceoff. They're both the Lakers. I apologize. Looks like Oswego State will win that. Oswego with it. Mercier ships it back. Taken by number nine, Brandon Clark of Oswego. Now cleared in by Mercieres. Foot race, won by Oswego. With it now is Schutz. Miranda fighting hard. Oh, he will be spun around, his lid comes off. I think he purposely leaves his lid a little loose there so he can show everyone his uh, pretty little haircut. That's the second time, second night in a row that his helmet has come popping off in the early stages of the game. All righty, we wait for the face-off right outside the uh, Oswego zone. So, so tempted to say Lakers, I'm uh, just, you know, I'll get used to it. Oswego chasing, played by Brandon Clark. He is tied up by a Laker, not sure who that is yet. Taken now is Dustin Kennedy over to Weimer. Mercy Erstall, well, they won't play it, eventually will. That's Miranda with the puck, trying to get it to Gannon Carr. Car tied up behind the net by Weimer. A lot of play behind this Mercier's goal. Shot in quickly right into the pads of Faulkner. He will cover. Well, it's a good thing to have a guy, a goaltender in net there with a has got some eyes because that crowd in front of the net was just so chaotic that I'm surprised Bobby or Bubbles has found the puck just sitting there out in the open. But this first attack here by the Oswego Lakers, definitely strong in the zone. They're going to keep that line out there as the Mercier's Lakers switch it up. Face-off one by Oswego State and a quick shot and a good save. James Mitchell on Adam Faulkner. 
With it now is Kennedy. He pushes it back to LaPaglia. He will lose the puck. No, Kennedy, LaPaglia will get it back, but it will go outside the uh, Mercier zone. Dumped in by Mitchell. Faulkner plays it. With it now are the Lakers. That's Odell. And it's dumped back into the uh, Mercier zone. Played around by Lizick. Cruz Lizick dressed for tonight's game. He did the camera work for last night, for, uh, well, Tuesday's playing. And Lizick will clear the puck up now. And it looks like that'll be whistled for icing. Well, uh, to continue talking about this beautiful rink facility, uh, I was listening to one of my daily hockey programs, as uh, some of you, if you have the XM Satellite Radio, Home Ice presented uh, kind of like a special feature on Eric Cole's foundation to promote hockey. And uh, this rink here was actually uh, made in part by him, by a lot of generous donations. So Eric Cole, the Carolina Hurricanes, made this rink possible. Some real quick shots on Adam Faulkner. Those taken by number 22, Nick Atkins. Faulkner with some tremendous saves right up front. He just couldn't seem to get a hand on the puck. Oh, and there'll be a check from behind. Looks like that'll be on Gramza. Oh, it'll be called a cross check. Brad Curvin went down pretty hard there. And the Lakers will be down a man, four on five hockey. So far with 17-19 remaining in the first period of play. Look at that scoreboard. They got the shots up there too. This is the second game in a row. We got some shots. Beautiful. Uh, and also, hey, we get to see what players up there and everything. Wow. And actually, I was talking to some of the rink guys here. They actually say that, that those screens on the board are actual video screens, not some funky color magic stuff. All right. With the puck are the Oswego State Lakers. Quick shot taken by Weimer. In the corner with it are the Lakers. That shuts. Now over to Distin. Distin passes it along to Hawthorne. Hawthorne again. He looks for the open man. No decides to shoot. We go up, side, up high and it'll be gloved down by Adam Faulkner. That was a good glove save there by Faulkner, even though it didn't look like it was going you know, right into the net. I mean, four feet tall is that net, but that shot looked like it was going for his soccer net. But a lot of good chances here being set up for Oswego as they trap the Lakers down in the zone on the power play. Faulkner was definitely playing some center field right there, but it uh, all for the better. Face off one by the Lakers, but eventually taken by Oswego. Oswego with it now. Hawthorne looks, shoots. That'll go off of somebody and wide. Played is Mitchell. Now shuts. Shuts look back to Mitchell. He dumps it in behind the net to Weimer. Weimer goes over to Hawthorne. Hawthorne chasing. Looks for Distin, no, he'll shoot right in front, a couple of uh, Oswego Lakers. Faulkner has it under his glove once again. Almost thought we were going to have a five-on-three opportunity for Oswego. Miranda got a good wrap on his uh, winger there on the side as he was trying to come in for an attack, but they just got to play more uh, disciplined hockey, keeping the sticks on the ice, keeping them away from the midsection. Once you get that stuck up in the torso area, you're, you're just as vulnerable to get a penalty as anybody else is. Oswego clearly wins that face-off, now taken by Clark. Clark goes inside to, to uh, Kervin. Now with it, number 21, which is Dustin Kennedy. And Clark can't keep it in, his, in the zone. Fighting off David Gaines, he will do so successfully. And he will dump it in back into Mercyhurst territory. Played by Faulkner. And cleared out by Mercyhurst. Chasing is David Gaines, but he's not going to go for it. That'll be picked up by Rink. Timothy Rink with the puck. He passes it off to Clark. He goes up to Rink. Curvin. Faulkner will play it off the glass. And he'll go right up to Gaines. Gaines looking what to do with it. He, the puck didn't catch up to him. He was a little too fast for that one. Curvin dumps it in. There'll be a line change for Oswego. First year sets up shop. Nine seconds remaining on the penalty. 15-25 remaining in the first period of play as it's cleared up. Penalty expires. Five minutes aside. Oswego dumps it into the Mercier zone, played by Odell. Odell trying to get it to Stefanski. And so we'll go to Stepanian, who quickly goes over to uh, Leon. Leon looks for a man. One shot, two shots. He see, can't seem to get it through to anybody. The rebound is picked up by Saramac. Saramac will clear. 
I think Faulkner didn't know what he wanted to do with playing with that one. I think he might have made a mistake there, but all for the better. Looks like Faulkner's going to be doing a lot of work tonight. It looks like this Oswego team likes to do a dump and chase kind of style of hockey outside of the run and gun. It's definitely a lot smarter and more disciplined. Gives these guys a lot of time to look at the plays they're coming in to see where Faulkner's going to put that puck. Fighting for it, Leon. Leon will eventually get the puck. He won that battle over Kervin. Lakers will, uh, both Lakers will try and get it. It'll be played in by Oswego behind the net. Oh, Faulkner's going to get called for a tripping penalty. Uh, well, that was inadvertent. He just put the stick back there trying to play the puck. Let's just hope that Faulkner watches his mouth tonight. Last night he got a 10-minute misconduct for his disagreement with one of the penalties, but I kind of disagree on that uh, a little bit for the side that he was actually going for the puck. Maybe the guy just didn't know how to skate, stepped right on his stick, fell down. Whose fault is that? I'm going to go with Oswego. You never know, he could have taken a little bit of a dive on that. You really don't know. We'll have to look at his stick after the game, see if there's any uh, nice little cut marks from skates in it. 4.18 remaining in the first period of play. Uh, according to the scoreboard, the shots are in favor of Oswego, 7-1. to one. Mercyhurst will have a penalty, two-minute tripping to Adam Faulkner, but that will be served by Stefanski. Oswego will set up the power play once again. It'll be dumped in by Distant. Weimer. Weimer ends up getting it right into Matt Warren. Matt Warren tries to clear it, but he didn't look at first, and it went right to distant stick. Hawthorne with it now. He shoots. Nice pad save, a booming pad save. <laughs> and a second attempt clear by Mercyhurst will go right to a stick of an Oswego player. Hawthorne dumps it around, eventually picked up by Weimer. Back is shots. Hawthorne shoots a couple shots on that. All pad saves by Falcon. Lakers can't seem to get it out of their own zone. Lakers are really trying to get frustrated with this. Uh, who is that in the corner? That's Miranda. Warren will eventually break free. He crossed the blue line, one man chasing him hard. That one man is Mitchell. It looks like there was some slashing going on there, a little bit of a clutch and grab. I don't know if we're going to get a hooking penalty here or a slashing penalty, but they were definitely on top of Warren. Both those guys, Gregory Diston and James Mitchell, both on the defense for Oswego, both had their hands all over the sticks on Matty Warren. Warren with that shot, it was batted down by the goaltender. They're going to call that position and blow the whistle. I guess they're calling it interference here. A uh, little confused why it would be interference, but if anything, I would have called it a slash or a hook. But, heck, it's, it's an opportunity now for the Lakers after the 40 seconds expires on Faulkner's penalty. Yeah, the, the Lakers will be uh, four on four for 48 seconds. After that, Mercyhurst will be on the power play. Look late, they ended up calling the first uh, person to encounter Warren as he was breaking into the zone. That, that of course, was distant. We will have a face-off to the left of Gregory Fiden. That face-off will be taken by Warren and Kennedy. Warren will be thrown out and instead will be taken by Revit. With it is Oswego State. Four on four hockey here for the next 40 seconds. 12.57 remaining in the first period of play. Oswego with it through the neutral zone. Taken by Kennedy. Kennedy drops it off to the man. I'm not sure who that is. I want to say that was Atkins, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, uh, there is one presence on the ice right now that uh, was kind of like a last-minute addition to the roster. Uh, well, not really addition to the roster. It was uh, Whitney Gibbs, who almost didn't have the chance to come down here, and now he takes his face off. Let's see what he can do out on the ice. Face off one by Gibbs and cleared out by Odell. Now taken by Oswego State. With it is LaPeglia. LaPeglia goes back to Loprick. Loprick, the German, who we discussed in the pregame show, hands the puck off to Luthauser. Luthauser tries to get it out. It'll come off of a Mercer's player. That was Gibbs. And now taken by LaPeglia of Oswego State. He will dump it in and go off. The Lakers are on the power play now for the next minute and five seconds. Mercyhurst, that's St uh, Stefanski, crosses the blue line. He looks for an open man. Goes into the corner. Lakers start to set up shop. That goes over to, to uh, Leon. Pat Leon with the man, does a 360. Quick, easy shot. Blocker save and a nice little deflection into the corner. Stefanski will take it. Leon right next to him. Leon will break free. Uh, that puck will be kept in by Gary Peterson. 
Cleared into the zone. Kenny Hunt trying to get it now. Stefanski instead will take it on the far on the near corner. Stefanski was getting a little frustrated with Mitchell in front of the net, so he took him down. I'm surprised he didn't get called for any kind of interference. Peterson shot, good save by Fiden. Couple good shots. None of them will go anywhere near in. 11 seconds remaining on the power play for Mercier's. Will Cox of Oswego will clear the puck in. But they need, none of them can finish the job as the penalty expires. With it now is Warren. Matt Warren looks for the open man. Tries to go to David Gaines at center ice. He can't pick up that pass and will chase it. He will get there first. David Gaines is one fast skater. Warren with a quick shot and that will be uh, tucked away by the goaltender. Nice on goal shot there by Warren on the point, just finishing off on the power play. But it definitely looked like the Lakers were kind of trapped back a little bit after that power play expired. But just the way they rushed the puck in there, luckily, luckily that puck bobbled over David Gaines' stick, calling off the icing. And so that led the Lakers of Mercyhurst to a great opportunity to score. Revit takes a shot. that will be deflected behind. I think the net's off its moorings. They're calling it outside, but I, I really don't think that that was a justified call. It looked like the Oswego player ran our guys into the net. And the faceoff will take place in neutral ice. 10.43 remaining in the first period of play. The faceoff to be taken by Whitney Gibbs, who will win it. Revit puts it right into Oswego's zone. Gramsa plays the puck, as does Revit. Revel will pass it up, but it will be taken by Wilcox. Wilcox will try and clear it in. That hit off a few people, and I think it went into the penalty box. Definitely one thing about this rink design is uh, very interesting. I've only seen this at one other rink that the Lakers have played at, and that was at Ohio University. But just looking at how the benches are diagonal across from each other, and the penalty boxes are both on the same side as the home teams. Very interesting design. Not many rinks have it like this. That was indeed interesting. With it now is Stefanski. Stefanski tries to go through to the defense. He won't be able to do so, but he will chase it down. Now, oh, the pocket picked of, of uh, Cruz Lizick. Now taken by Oswego. Two quick shots, one wide, one pad saved by Faulkner. First year, got a little lucky there. Lizick with it now. He passes it off to Zipanian. Zipanian, one man ahead of him. He goes over to Lizick. Lizick tries to pass back in front. No, it'll be blocked by number 14, Fabian Loprick. Now played by Oswego. Leon picks his pocket and sends it behind the net. Lizick passes it back. Stepanian tries for it. It'll eventually be taken by Fabian Loprick, who will try and clear it out, but that'll be stopped by Gramza. Again behind the net, nobody wanted it. And there's a call. Uh, it looks like we have an interference call coming here to the Oswego Lakers. They had two men, one guy carrying the puck there, and the other guy interfered with Patrick Leone behind the net, who was chasing the puck carrier. But this game is definitely a lot more exciting than it was last night in the beginning, uh, considering uh, just we had a one nothing first period uh, last night with Syracuse Orange. Tonight we have 11-7 to in shots, a lot closer of a game, a lot more intensity, especially with power play opportunities coming early. As we saw late last night, the team seemed to come together. With it now is uh, David Gaines, so he's fighting for it. Team definitely looks like a more cohesive unit right now. These uh, early road trips are definitely beneficial for team building. With it now is uh, Gaines, who goes to Warren. Warren shoots it from the top. That'll deflect off a stick and into the meshing. 9.14 remaining in the first period of play. The Lakers have a minute and 38 remaining on their power play. Solid shot there by Warren deflecting off one of the uh, Oswego Lakers players, but, uh, oh, apparently not. Difference of opinion by the linesman down low. I heard it go off. It sounded like it went off somebody's boot uh, on their skate, but maybe it was a Laker, uh, Mercier's Laker player. Got to get used to that. Lakers. It was definitely tough. I announced uh, the second half color commentary for the football game versus uh, Mercier's versus Grand Valley State, which both are the Lakers, and that was quite difficult. <laughs> So uh, I have a little more experience than most, but this is still a little difficult. But still, it's two different lakes. They got Lake Ontario, we got Lake Erie. And we all know that Lake Erie is much, much more polluted. With it, <laughs> with it now is Peterson. Peterson passes it up. It'll be taken by Leon. Leon has Hunt in front of the net. He will cycle behind the goalie. Quick pass over to, to Warren and uh, Peterson were playing catch. Leon will shoot. Quick shot taken by, Graham, by David Gaines. 
goaltender will push the uh, net off its moorings. We had a nice little flurry of shots there. Uh, it's quite interesting to see the goaltender get flusher there and fall backwards into the net. Uh, that's how surprised he was by the attack by the Mercier's Lakers. 49 seconds remaining on the power play for the Mercier's Lakers. It looks like those uh, nets aren't very well anchored. It's almost like they're using the old magnets uh, of the 90s NHL. Face-off won by Mercyhurst. Now taken by uh, Charlie Revit. Whitney Gibbs tries to pass it back to Warren. It'll go back to Gibbs. And that's tossed all the way back so Adam Falker can play it. Gannon Carr will pick up the loose change. He will cycle behind his net. Goes up to Stefanski. Stefanski goes back into Warren, but that was a little too far away from him. And Warren will be forced to set up again with 22 seconds remaining on the power play. Warren crosses through the neutral zone, takes a shot, goes in, a quick shot inside. Oh, and it goes in! Right through the five hole. Matt Warren definitely went hard to the net, faked out the shot, and fooled everybody, and uh, even fooled us a little bit here because, you know, with a beautiful rink facility, where the heck are the goal judges? I thought he had that in, a, in his pads. I didn't know it went through. I guess that shot was just hard enough and fast enough that it went punched right in. Well, at 7.50 uh, left in the first period of play, Matt Warren will score a power play goal. I believe that will be assisted by uh, Charlie Revit. Yeah, I think Charlie Reve definitely put it up there for him, and also uh, I believe Stefanski may get credit as well. So we got the kid, Reve, helping out here with Matt Warren, getting the first goal of the game, a power play goal for Mercyhurst. Faulkner had a poke check on that one. Oswego State definitely does not look happy after that goal. They uh, didn't play good defense, and uh, that's what that's will happen when you get a breakaway like that. In front, a flurry of shots. I don't think any of them got through to Adam Faulkner. Gannon Carr had a number of those uh, blocks, as did Mike Miranda. We'll have a face-off. We got ourselves a hand pass here. Looked like he bobbled it over to his uh, his defenseman there. I couldn't tell who that was for a moment, but uh, face-off comes outside, gives the Lakers, uh, Mercier's Lakers, a little bit of a break. Face-off won by Oswego State. Passed over to Miranda. Miranda goes up to Revert. Miranda goes up, picked up by Gaines. Gaines takes it across. He looks for an open man. No, he will decide to keep it. Finds it. Re <laughs> Revit. Revit couldn't put it in. There just wasn't enough of a handle on that puck. Gannon Carr will play the puck in the neutral zone. He will bring it back into friendly territory where it's deflected off the stick and will almost bounce into the bench, but no, it won't. It will be cleared around the boards. Adam Faulkner couldn't play that one. With it now is Peterson. He dumps it off. I'm sorry, Whitney Gibbs will get it back. Uh, that was, Richard Collins had the shot, but that went wide. Collins still with it. He's trying to punch it in. Eventually, the net will go off its moorings, and uh, Faulkner will go fly, flailing backwards. What is up with all these nets coming off? I mean, last night we had a lot of stoppages of play due to icings and pucks out of play and uh, offsides tonight. The only whistles that I've really seen here, other than a hand pass there, was the net coming off a couple of times. Maybe they are using magnets. Face off one by Kenny Hunt, but that was a <laughs> very unconventional win. Hunt behind the net. He will try and pass it up to Leon. Instead, he will make out a shot on net. Now taken by Brandon Clark of Oswego State. Clark and Diston playing catch on defense, pressured by Warren. They will eventually cough up the puck. I'll be taken uh, by Warren. Warren looks for an open man. He can't seem to find one. He's pressured hard by Jamie Schutz, who's doing a little bit of slashing, a little water skiing effort. That'll be played off the referee, and that will work out for Warren. He goes over to Blake Camlin. Camlin with the puck, crosses the red line, goes up to Kenny Hunt. Now over to Leon. Hunt. Hunt shoots right into the breadbasket of the goaltender. Wow, what, what a great pass play there, going from Camlin over to Hunt and that and over to Leon. It's just the connection between those three right now. Looks like he's experimenting with a uh, new blend here on this line. I definitely haven't seen this combination yet, but it uh, so far they seem to be playing pretty cohesively. Looks like Camlin's back on defense here, and uh, Leon is moved up from a different line to be on this first line for the Lakers. A lot of responsibility for a rookie. Camlin played a lot of defense, though, in his younger days, all through high school. So uh, we will find out if he's able to pick that up at the college level. Quick shot by Leon will go wide. That'll uh, hit off the glass and I guess go on top of the net. 
Yep, it was sitting right on top of the net there. A big deflected shot that uh, went, well, actually it went wide of the net and that bounced off the glass and just decided to sit on top of the net. And because of that, because it deflected off of nobody, it will go outside. Lakers, uh, Mercer's Lakers will change lines. Stefanski will take the face off and he will win it. Stepanian clears it in. As we go chasing, that's Wilcox behind the net. Chased by Stepanian. Wilcox looks. He will pass it up to Hawthorne. It will eventually go to Kennedy. It will be taken by Mercer. Oh, big hit as Cruz Lizick goes down. Stefanski with it. He looks, dances around one man, two men. Tries to do a 360. He couldn't complete that one, though. Eventually dumped in by Mercyhurst. Number number nine, which is Brandon. Oh, I'm sorry. That's number six, James Mitchell. I couldn't see. I saw. I thought that was an eight, and there is no eight on this roster. Mitchell uh, wouldn't let the goaltender play it, and that worked out as it goes out to Kennedy. Kennedy down, goes around one man, and he looks. Starts to shut up, set up shop. He will go across to Wilcox. Wilcox will go inside to the corner. He was looking for Hawthorne. With it now is Loper. In that initial rush into the zone there, Dustin Kennedy picked the puck out of the air. It looked like he gloved it and then dropped it down to himself. I really thought there should have been a call. Gaines tries to dump the puck in, but he's rubbed off. Now taken by Revit. Revit will deflect it, and that'll go up far into the stands. That's right next to it. I thought it was going to hit the uh, spotlight next to us, and that would have been quite a, uh, a financial burden here. <laughs> For us, we go state. I, I don't want to go blind. I hope uh, glass doesn't explode all over me or anything. I actually want to see the, the rest of this game. But last night, it was so boring, I was actually hoping to get hit by a puck. Well, tonight, I'm just as excited from the very get-go to this point as well. Maybe it'll look like the natural with glass bursting all around us. With it in the corner is as we go state. That's picked up by Greg Diston. Passed over to number 22, Atkins, who goes back to rink. Played by Faulkner. Faulkner almost had that puck stolen from him. But no, he kept on by Gannon Carr. He will pass it up to Gaines. David Gaines, one man ahead of him. One man drawing up beside him. Oh, and an errant pass that's going to be nowhere near the man beside him, which was Charlie Revit. Gaines tries to get back on sides. Looks a little sluggish after that shift. No, he's still staying on. He still has some energy left to burn. Oswego with it. That's taken by Rink, whose shot was deflected. Now taken by Mercyhurst. Whitney Gibbs will pass it off to Gannon Carr. Gaines tries to push it up. Gaines getting roughed up a bit. Oh, Adam Faulkner flashes the leather. Nice glove save. Well, just a lot of work here uh, by the Oswego Lakers inside the Mercyhurst Lakers zone. Uh, just a lot of good puck movement in that, and they're starting to take a little bit more shots here as the margin is starting to spread out a little bit more. Uh, the shots are 14-11 in favor of Oswego, but the Lakers need to keep on putting the uh, Mercyhurst Lakers have to keep on putting the puck on net. That's where all the chances are lying, and if Matty Warren can keep getting it on net, some rebounds are sure to be picked up. Taken now by Warren. He tries to go over to Leon. He will, as his pass will be intercepted. Leon will eventually get it and try to push it into the zone. Picked up by Hunt, goes to Warren off the skate. Oh, and a quick shot, and that was wide. That would have been an incredible goal. Kenny Hunt goes up. He will eventually find, who is that? That's Blake Camlin at the point. Now taken by Ben Odell as it comes outside the zone. Mercier's tags up as it's taken by Greg Diston. Diston looks, tries to go to the center, but instead will be intercepted by Leon as the center was not watching it. Rubbed off the puck is Brandon Clark by Matt Warren. Chase now Diston, Leon right behind him. Clark. Leon fighting for it. Diston standing outside like a shark. Kenny Hunt tries for the one-timer off Matt Warren. He won't get to uh, complete that as it went off the skate of Diston. In the corner now is Kenny Hunt. He tries to play it out to Warren. He won't get there. The Mercyhurst will not give up on this chance. Kenny Hunt with it. He looks for an open man. Ben Odell calls for it. He eventually will get it. Quick, easy shot in. And it'll trickle through to the goaltender who will cover up. Great work by the Mercyhurst Lakers here, but I really thought that that number three on the Oswego Lakers, Eric Zaran, he definitely did not go into Kenny Hunt there with any kind of shoulder. He went into him with his fists up high. I really think that the referees missed a very precious call that should have been called here. 1.59, says the clock. First period of play winding down. 
as Gramza dumps it in around the end boards. Chased down by Lizick. Lizick pu uh, pushes the puck up. Quick shot. That, that almost became an, uh, a fluke goal for the Lakers. Gramza with the puck now. No, it will be stolen by Schutz as he pushes it through. Now taken by Hawthorne. Hawthorne dumps it in. Looks like Step Stepanian will uh, get there first, but Hawthorne will get the puck back. He one times it off of number six, which is Mitchell. That was a save by Faulkner. With the puck now, uh, is Oswego State taken by Schutz. Schutz looks for an open man out of the corner. He will find Kervin. Back to Schutz. Kervin. Collins, he shoots. Hawthorne. Pad save by Faulkner off of Mitchell. Mitchell can't keep the puck in, though, and he will chase after. 53 seconds remaining in the first period of play. Mercier tries to keep it in. There's an offside, but they will get out of the zone before it's called. Wilcox will clear it up over to Odell. I'm sorry, that's Miranda. That puck will go all the way in. 36 re seconds remaining on the clock. Gaines fights for it. Oswego State looks very tired right now. They are just trying to hold on to the puck and end this period. They don't seem to really care about getting out of the zone and playing offense with 23 seconds remaining. And Mercyhurst is trying to capitalize on it, but they're just playing defense too well. Wilcox finally in the Mercyhurst zone. Three men set up. Shot was wide, far wide by LaPaglia. Faulkner will make one save. Now taken by LaPaglia. He clears it out, and that will go all the way back to the goaltender. Three seconds on the clock. Two, one. And that will end the first period of play here in Oswego, New York. We'll come back for the intermission report right after this. John Baranowski here with David Stearns for the first intermission report. All right, we are here in Oswego, New York. What do you think so far? Uh, what do I think so far? I think that the period started out great. We saw a lot of fire coming from both sides, back and forth hockey. I mean, proof enough is on the scoreboard. One to nothing in favor of the Mercier's Lakers, but the shots are in favor for the Oswego Lakers because pretty much, as you saw in the last few minutes of that period, there were tons of flurries of shots on Adam Faulkner. But the thing is, the Oswego Lakers, uh, the Oswego State Lakers, just don't seem to be uh, tested enough. We have a few shots in that. Their goaltender has been covering up pucks left and right. He has been very solid in net there as far as the shots coming to him. But you saw him panic a few times where he fell backwards into the net. And it's just overall, right now, it's a goaltending duel. You have, what do you got now at this point? What does that up? At up to 30 shots in just one period alone? unbelievable hockey. I mean, we're seeing a lot of great offense, but I think it really uh, if you look at the other side, we see a breakdown of defense as well on both sides. But throwing it over to you, what do you think about the goaltending situation right now as far as uh, Faulkner's play and also on the Oswego State side? There's really, I have no complaints in Faulkner's play. He is playing phenomenally right now. Uh, there, there's really no fault. He hasn't let in a goal yet, so it, it's what can you really call a flaw right now? He, there hasn't been a, a huge chance for Oswego. But then again, there hasn't need to be. I mean, the, the defense has let shots through, sure. I mean, 18 of them. But not that many have been great shots with great scoring opportunities. Scoring chances, it, it might be somewhere around 10 to 7 in favor of Oswego. I got to beg to differ with you on that. There have been so many scoring chances right now for Oswego State because of the power plays that we've allowed them to have. And just when you have flurries of shot, when you only have four guys on the ice, when you got the box collapsing on itself and you have a crowd in front of the net, Whoever's keeping track of the shots is doing a heck of a lot better of a job tonight compared to when they were taking track of shots in Syracuse because I've counted it myself in my head, whereas you probably heard me silent a lot. I've been counting. These guys are right on with the shot count. Oswego State is doing a great job pouring on pressure, especially on power play opportunities. Well, at least, and I'm always a positive guy. You can tell I'm always the optimist, ever the optimist, that Mercier seems to be playing like a team this time. They seem to know where each other is on the ice. They seem to know where they want to go with the puck. There hasn't been that many errant passes, hasn't been any clears to nowhere without plans set up. So at least Mercyhurst is playing like the Laker team that we know and love. 
Well, that's what we saw yesterday, especially towards the end. The third period of yesterday's game definitely saw a lot of continuity and a lot of chemistry going on with these guys. And I'm an optimist, too. Don't get me wrong. I do believe that this team is definitely coming together quite well at this point. But there are still some things that need to be worked out. It's still an early season. Right now, what is this? Only the fifth game in their season with three exhibition games and one league game. I really think that things are coming together a lot better than they usually would as far as having a brand of a new team, 13 rookies. It's just unbelievable how things are coming together so quickly considering it's still a young, very young team. But that's the great thing about having a young team. You can gel them together right now and for the next four years or three years after this, you're going to have a great team that knows each other inside and out. And just having that personality mesh amongst the guys, they'll know how each other works, and that's what we're seeing develop out here on the ice, especially in tonight's game and at the end of last night's game against Syracuse. So hopefully we will see this continuing into the second period of play, where we will come back to that right after this. We wait for the beginning of the second period of play. Both Lakers take the ice. I'm John Baranowski, and with me is David Stearns. Here in Oswego, New York, home of the Lakers. Face off will be taken by two number 17s and it will be won by Kenny Hunt of Mercyhurst. Leon tries to push it in. He will do so, but it will be taken quickly by Oswego State. Leon gets it back though, tripped up a little bit. He will eventually get it and it will be played by the goaltender, Fiden. With it now is Luthauser. He tries to go up to Hawthorne, but that pass will be wide. It will be called icing. Looks like uh, their coach over there for uh, Oswego State is uh, getting a little bit more uh, pep going there on the bench. And uh, as you could tell when they first started with the drop of the puck there, they were all chattering on the bench with their sticks and that and their gloves and their skates. They're definitely getting ready for the second period. I don't think they're too happy about going down one nothing in their barn. Leon takes a shot. That'll go wide. Miranda will play it, but it'll be taken by Oswego. That pass to Hawthorne eventually will get through, even though it's uh, taken by Leon first. Miranda passes it up to Leon. Leon can't seem to get the puck on his stick right now. At least he can't seem to keep it there. Warren plays it in the corner. A lot of rough action, so maybe some interference by Luthauser. Hawthorne with it, goes out to uh, the center of his zone. Picked up by Warren. Warren will play back to Miranda. He passes it up. Gaines couldn't hold on to it either. It's a slippery puck right now. As it's now taken by Hawthorne of Oswego. He gets it. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Miranda got laid out. Two nights in a row. I don't think uh, he's taking those hits properly. He's got to keep his balance because the way he's making these hits look, you know, it's giving you momentum over to the opposing side. Miranda won't, might want to put some ice on it, and by it, I mean his whole body. Taken by Warren over to Gibbs. Grab it with it now. He shoots. Pad save. Taken now by Gramza. That shot will be wide and will go around the horn. Revit trying to get the puck back. He won't do so. It's taken by Oswego. Big check by Whitney Gibbs. Puck will go back into the zone. A lot of yelling by the uh, coaches. He's calling out the play. Now taken by LaPeglia. LaPeglia will shoot and it'll go wide. Gaines will play the puck, but it'll be taken by Weimer. Weimer goes out in front to Wilcox. Wilcox shoots. Big rebound. Big juicy rebound by Adam Faulkner. That'll go out to Revit. Revit plays the puck. Over to Gaines. Gaines will drop it back to uh, Whitney Gibbs. Quick shot. And I guess it was touched by Oswego. I think we have a penalty coming up here to Oswego, but I believe it was number 21. Uh, that would be Dustin Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy was having a little bit of trouble there. Uh, he was getting a little frustrated here in the front of the bench. He had Whitney Gibbs and... Uh, it hit him initially, but then he got sandwiched between uh, Charlie Reve and also uh, Pat Shearer, but he even got more frustrated inside the Mercier's Lakers zone as he couldn't get uh, what he wanted. So, of course, he takes it out, and I believe it was a hook. The faceoff in Oswego territory won by the Lakers, taken out by Warren. Warren with a quick, easy shot, and it will go in! He shoots and scores! That was Stefanski with a phenomenal rebound. This power play is just looking amazing tonight. Uh, just seeing that uh, you can have two lines here of power play. You know, just seeing how they work together so well. Just Stefanski just rushing in, taking a beautiful shot, hits the back of the net. I think everybody in this arena heard it. Do you think that was a set play there? That seemed like a nice, easy shot by Matt Warren. And a uh, big, juicy rebound put in. I think they're starting to make the power play look really easy on the Mercier's Lakers end. These guys are definitely coming together well, and they're picking up the systems at practice and on the off-ice practices. These guys are learning. They're blending together quite well. 
Oswego will take it now down two to nothing with 7.32 remaining on the clock in the second period of play. Odell couldn't seem to get a handle on the puck and a big hit on uh, Blake Camlin. That hit made by Nick Atkins. Bunch of players chasing for the puck. It'll eventually be picked up by Brandon Clark who will take it deep into his own zone. And then he will pass it off to Nick Atkins. Warren will get the puck. He will, he's chasing after it now anyway. He couldn't seem to keep possession of it. Nobody seems to really have much possession of this puck. It seems to be all over the place. No player seems to have it for more than just a second or two. Right now, Luthauser will pass it up. Lakers will take it. Camlin will dump it in. Luthauser again. At the time, it will be intercepted directly by Kenny Hunt. It will be shot by Stepanian, and that will uh, be blocked. Lizick goes down hard, and the penalty will be called as he was checked by Eric Zeron. Luthauser will be called interference. Yeah, that was definitely a little bit of a cheap shot there. Uh, just taking him out of the play for no reason, even though he did not have complete possession of the puck. But Zaran will go down, sit down, and think about what he did. He will definitely get two minutes to cool his skates. The shots now read 20 to 17 in favor of Oswego State, even though they are down two to nothing with 16:36 remaining in the second period of play. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but what are they on the power play right now? I mean, they already have two power play goals. How many opportunities? I'm guessing they might be two for three. And that'll be a quick shot taken by Stepanian, and that'll be held by the goaltender from Fiden. So we have face off to his right. I'm John Baranowski, with me is David Stearns. Here in Oswego, New York, your Mercier's Lakers are in blue. Oswego State Lakers are in gold. Or uh, I'm not sure that's gold or yellow, but either way, they look like the uh, California Golden Seals of the 70s wearing yellow at home. They uh, apparently wear green on the road as one of their players on the bench is in the uh, road uniform. Gannon Carr with it at the point. He looks and he will go over to Miranda who shoots. Quick shot rebound. And that rebound will eventually be covered by Fiden. Seeing a lot of frustration here by the Oswego uh, State Lakers. Uh, they are definitely looking like they're running around chasing people. They're getting very frustrated because something about their penalty kill format and system is not working against this powerful power play by the Mercier's Lakers. One minute and 44 seconds remaining on the power play for the Mercier's Lakers. The faceoff uh, barely won. You know, we'll, we'll call it a draw. But uh, Whitney Gibbs will be chasing after right now. He will have possession. Eventually go to Las Vegas. But Gannon Carr will pick it up as it goes around the horn. David Gaines calling for it. He'll get the puck. He looks. Decides to go back to Carr. Carr looks cross ice. Someone's calling for it. That's Miranda. But he won't go to him yet. Carr looks inside. Shoots. A penalty will be called. No penalty, they're just calling in the crease, I believe, outside, or it could be a penalty. Uh, not exactly sure here, but it looks like Whitney Gibbs is going in, and uh, he's got him for a slash. Well, I definitely didn't see a slash there, but I guess uh, I'm not the one who matters. I'm thinking it was a crowd in front of the net. He was getting a little frustrated with the defensemen that were all over him because he was the lone star out there in front of the net looking to pick up some rebounds and cause a good screen, but he got so frustrated that he just came back down with the stick and hit the slash. Four on four hockey for the next minute, 18 seconds. After that, Oswego State will be on the power play. Oswego with it, Jamie Schutz. Schutz dumps it off to Hawthorne who shoots. Falker will flash the leather for a good save. This isn't the first time we've seen a four on four, but last period when we saw that four on four, it seemed like the momentum was shifting towards Oswego State, considering that they had the open ice and they were able to read things better as they were coming in on the attack. So uh, the momentum might be shifting yet again, but we'll have to wait and see. Mercier's to win that face-off, taken by Scherer. Hunt with it now in the corner. He will go back to Scherer. He will shoot. Two shots taken by Schutz. Three, oh, and a big, <laughs> Schutz went down hard at the hands of Kenny Hunt. That puck will be deflected high and into the corner. What a rough play on this four on four right now. 43 seconds remaining on that. Like I was saying during the intermission there, those flurry of shots were definitely coming in hard on Adam Faulkner. That is not, you know, really, um, it's really the case most of this game right now. The flurries are just coming in and they are coming hard. These goaltenders are standing on their heads. There's a whistle with 32 seconds remaining on that four on four. 15.08 remaining in the second period of play. I'm guessing there's gonna be a face off. I'm hoping there's gonna be a face off or else this game would be over. Taken by number 21 of uh, Oswego State, which is Dustin Kennedy. But won by Pat Leone over to Scherer. Scherer dumps it off. 
looking for somebody. Taking it is Stefanski. Stefanski will cross the blue line. He looks, he has an open man in Leona cross ice. He'll try to go to him, but he'll hit the goaltender in the side and he'll drop right beside him and he will cover up. Nice little snag, but uh, this goaltender, Faden, keeps on backing into that net, keeps on bobbling off, but he had a nice little glove save there, but he just couldn't secure it uh, properly, which made it look like it could have made a nasty bounce going to the net. It'd be bad for them to go down three to nothing. Faden looks a lot like Felix Potvin. Potvin usually playing deep in his own net and relying on his instincts and his reaction time. Uh, it seems to be working so far, but though he is down two, he has taken 21 shots. With it now is Oswego State, deep in Mercier's territory. That's distant. I think Mike Dunham was the other goaltender. He played for the Islanders. He also used the doghouse quite a bit. Distant will dump it in. And right now with it is Kennedy. Kennedy sets up shop in the corner. And he looks cross ice and he will find Clark. Clark goes over to Distant. Distant will shoot. And will go wide. Rebound picked up by Kennedy. Kennedy can't seem to put it on net. He instead takes it and decides to wait. Goes to Distant. Distant shots. Oh, a huge shot blocked by Stefanski. That looked like it hurt, but he gets right up and keeps playing. That's the beauty of hockey. Distant with another shot. Again, they'll be blocked by a Laker, just not quite so uh, eagerly. And I'll be cleared deep in the uh, Oswego territory. Lakers will get to change. And all penalties are wiped off the board here with 13.53 remaining in the second period of play. Mercier up two to nothing. With it right now is Kervin. He takes a shot. Faulkner was right in position for that one. Played in is Luthauser. Fighting for it as uh, two Lakers, one on each side. Looks like nobody could get a hold on the puck, but there's going to be a penalty against Mercyhurst again. Honestly, I don't understand why they're calling that penalty. Timothy Rink from the Oswego State uh, Lakers there. He just tied up somebody. He just got a hook on somebody. I couldn't tell who it was, but he had him hooked up clearly. Now they're calling Whitney Gibbs again for yet another penalty. 3.31 remaining. Yes, Whitney Gibbs will spend two more minutes in the box. That'll be taken by Charlie Revit and Jamie Schutz, who will win that faceoff. Now taken by Hawthorne. Puck deflected by uh, Cameron. Cameron playing some superb defense in the corner. That'll go out to Distin. Distin plays it into Hawthorne. Hawthorne looks. Distin calls for it, and he will get it. No, it'll go over his stick and out of the zone. Well, Mercier's Lakers got lucky on that one. Distance still with it, even though Mercier's is pressuring. Taken now by Mitchell. Mitchell looks, drops it off to Weimer. He goes off to Distance, who shoots. Oh, that deflected off a man that almost went in, but that was just barely wide. Now taken by Schutz. Mercier's will steal that. No, it'll go back. Schutz with it behind the net once again. Schutz looks, he passes it into Weimer. Weimer behind the net. They're trying for this uh, big behind the net uh, campaign right now. That pass behind goes off of Hawthorne all the way back to Weimer. Hawthorne with it now. He looks. He decides to take it himself, calls his own number. And that'll be a nice pad save by Adam Faulkner. Fighting will play it back in his own zone. With it now is distant. The Lakers, uh, Mercyhurst has to be very careful about putting too much pressure on these guys on the power play. But there are two people that I noticed that are great uh, penalty killers right now, and that would be David Gaines and also Camlin. Oh, a quick shot, one-timer. The crowd goes wild as Dustin Kennedy passes it off to, I want to say, Jamie Schutz. That was the uh, weirdest goal horn I've ever heard. It sounded like a dying seal. Oh, my goodness. That is the most annoying sound I've ever heard. I think it's actually a recreation of the sound from Dumb and Dumber. It's, it's an ee that is the most annoying sound of the world. <laughs> well, that will be a power play goal. Mercier's Lakers will be up still 2-1. to one. But of course, they absolutely love that sound here because they know it annoys the away teams because they know they just got scored on. That's a very good point. There is uh, quite a bit of uh, psychological warfare with this huge arena awestrucking, I'm sure, many teams. And after that goal horn, I, I think they're annoyed. <laughs> Plain and simple. Well, then now is Rink. Rink in the corner. He will look. He's looking for Luthauser. No, instead he will go into Atkins. Atkins in the corner now. He will go across ice. Another one-timer attempt there. Luthauser dumps it in over to Rink. Rink with it. He looks inside. That was blocked by Hunt. Leon will take the puck and he will pass it over to Warren. 
Warren at center ice. He looks. He will lose possession of it, though. We take it eventually by Miranda. Everyone trying to get back as the uh, Las Vegas State Lakers have a good rush. That shot will go wide. Now taken by Matt Warren. Warren at center ice. He looks. He shoots. Oh, and that was a harder save than it should have been for Greg Fiden. The Lakers definitely look like they're getting trapped inside the zone, and they're a little bit uh, discombobulated. I'm talking about Mercier's, of course. Got to make sure you guys know that. But it's just like that goal took away a lot of momentum that came over from the first period, and after that first goal that the Mercier's Lakers scored in this period, make it 2 to nothing. now that gap is getting just as small as it was coming into this period. Warren, uh, definitely one of the first players to get angry on the, on the ice, you can tell. Uh, especially Central Penn Panthers. He uh, was playing much the same way. A quick shot. End of the blocker will be held by Fiden. I thought James Mitchell got his elbow up there on Brian Stefanski. Stefanski looks a little bit rattled, but as soon as Mitchell took Stefanski into the boards, I saw the elbow come clear up into the helmet of Stefanski. Of course he's not happy about that. And after a couple of retaliatory hits, the referee just didn't care, uh, care at all. Just let it go. Sometimes the elbow can be a very, very dangerous weapon in hockey, especially since it can be used so easily. That happens so often. The penalty sometimes just isn't enough. Oswego State picks it up. They will flip it out. With it now is Collins. Collins clears it up and he's chasing it now. Miranda will hit him hard into the boards and Gannon Carr will pick up the loose puck. Eventually it'll be taken by Stepanian. Stepanian will try and clear, but it'll be stopped by Wilcox. Wilcox clears. Faulkner will play it. Carr takes the man. With it now, uh, that was uh, Lizick. Lizick passes it over to Stefanski. Stefanski with it. He looks, tries to go through the defense. He said it will stop. Stepania will try and pick up the loose change, but he couldn't keep it either. Wilcox passes it up to number 11, Schutz. Schutz with a puck. He winds up. No, <laughs> that was a, tried to be a shot blocked by Miranda. He went right around him, but that shot was wide, much to the chagrin of this audience. That was a perfect fake there by Schutz, but Miranda bought into it completely. Almost cost Mercier a goal. Yeah, that was a huge defensive faux pas. David Gaines passed it up to Whitney Gibbs. Whitney Gibbs can't get to it in time, however. And it'll be taken by Romano. Romano shoots, pad save, covered by Falker. Falker will be hit and it will go in. That's not going to be counted. It's already been waved off by the referee. Romano crashed right into the net even after the whistle was blown. That was kind of dirty there, just charging right into the glove hand of Adam Faulkner. So the Mercier's Lakers should come to his defense, no doubt, and it's well warranted. Lakers having a bit of a tea party in front of the net right there. Bunch of uh, pushing around going. Uh, looks like we're going to have coincidental winers. Here with 9.35 remaining in the second period of play, the Mercier's Lakers down, uh, I'm sorry, up 2-1. to one. I'm, I'm so used to being down early in the game. Thank goodness the Lakers are up for once. Boy, aren't you the positive guy during the intermission? You said you were an optimist. I think you just contradicted yourself. But anyway, considering the events that just happened here, uh, we have uh, Eric Zaran going into the box and uh, Whitney Gibbs going into the box. Obviously, the referees are kind of copping out from actually making a decent call, considering that the Oswego State Lakers were actually at fault here. That is Whitney Gibbs' sixth minute, is it not? That is true. Yeah, and uh, just in the second period of play, just halfway through this game, he already has three penalties. We got Matt Warren over there talking now to the referee. He probably uh, has made it clear that things are kind of swinging the wrong way here and things should get back into order. Face-off taken by Revit. Revit will win that face-off clean. will go to Gramza. Gramza will pass it around. Gaines plays it. He won't get it out. Instead, it's stopped by Clark. Clark plays the puck. Revit chasing. Clark will get there first. Looks like uh, Oswego State just wants it more right now. I'll be taken by Distant. Distant sets up shop. Four on four hockey for the next one, minute 38. Distant clears it in, shoots. That was just wide. Scared me for a moment there as I saw it through the net. Gramsel will go for the puck, as will Weimer. Weimer will get there first, but it'll go out to David Gaines. David Gaines on the breakout. Revit ahead of him. Instead, Gaines will keep it as Revit straddles the blue line. Gaines looks good to Revit. One timer. Oh, and it'll go wide. Revit with it now in the corner. Fighting for it is Dustin Kennedy. Kennedy will win that fight, but it'll go off Mercier's Laker as he clears it. Definitely uh, the 4-on-4 four four does seem to swing in the uh, favor of Oswego State, but David Gaines, one of the better players out there on the ice in these kinds of terms of adversity, had a nice little jump there to break in on net. Definitely great moves, great speed, great jump. 
That's David Gaines. Cleared up by Mercyhurst, and looks like that'll be called icing. 49 seconds remaining on the four on four, the coincidental minors. 824 remaining in the second period of play. I'm John Baranowski, with me is David Stearns here in Oswego, New York, at a phenomenal ice rink that uh, was built by uh, Eric Cairns. Well, too bad that this uh, this team that we're seeing here tonight isn't the number one team here because I'd love to see this place filled up, but the rink guys were telling me last night was complete sellout for their NCAA uh, Division Three team. Odell will play it up to uh, Warren. Warren fighting for it. Looks like he's going to get some hardcore interference from Luthauser. Kenny Hubble picking up and looking at Warren in the center. He shoots. I'll go off the arm of the goaltender, Fiden. Oswego with it in the corner. Dumped off to Luthauser. He will go up. Two shots. I'm sorry, Haw well, Hawthorne with it now. Hawthorne crosses the blue line. He will go into the corner. Chased down by, uh, who is that? It doesn't matter still because Kenny, Kenny Hunt has it now. Excuse me. Kenny Hunt goes over to Warren one time around. It's deflected. Off of number 14, Loprick. Looks like uh, Odell with it. He will shoot, and his shot will be blocked by Loprick. Kenny Hunt with it. He looks like he's getting some uh, water skiing effort. There looks to be some hooking going on by the uh, Oswego State Lakers, but nothing will be called. Kenny Hunt got some revenge at the hands of uh, Whitney Gibbs. Quick shot. Oh, and a tremendous glove save on Hawthorne. The Hawthorne is tripped up, and he will go into Faulkner. Nobody's happy. Whitney Gibbs completed a check there. That whistle came right at the same time. I don't know what the coaching staff. And look at that. We have a disgruntled fan here calling out Whitney Gibbs. Wow. They don't like him. Last night, Matt Warren had some fans just like that, giving him the double eagle birds. And now we have people on Whitney Gibbs's behind. The captaincy not well received here at Foreign Rinks. Face off one. It's foreign. It's not Mercyhurst. But it's not Germany. Close enough. All right, with it now, Step Stefanski tries to keep it in. Stepania will eventually get it back to Stefanski, who will play it off the linesman, and it will sit on the blue line. Nothing going well right now for the Lakers, but they are playing five-on-five -five hockey once again with 6.54 remaining in the second period of play. That's uh, cleared in by number seven, Carvin, now played by the Lakers, taken by Stepania. Stepania will pass it off to Stefanski. Stefanski looks. He will get it up to Lizzie. Cruz Lizick will dump it in, and it'll be taken by number six, Mitchell. Mitchell of Oswego State will take the puck, and he will go cross ice to Rink. Rink goes up the rink, and it goes back to Rink. But he is tripped up by Gannon Carr, and uh, will be called a penalty. That's quite unfortunate there. The Lakers uh, going back on the PK, but who knows? Maybe things will open up here, and... Uh, Oswego State will get a penalty against themselves because it seems like the refereeing of this game is all over the place. But you know what I was thinking with that line out there? You have Stepanian and Stefanski. It's like, what if you had to go, oh, he steps it up to Stefanski up at center, who steps up to uh, Stepanian, over to Stefanski to Stepanian. Yeah, that would be just fun to call. Please do it sometime. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> That's what you call a play-by-play -play nightmare. But we will see. Hopefully it'll happen anyway. David Gaines with the puck now. He tries to get it out. Taken by... Well, it had to be Hawthorne. As we go with it now, it goes up to Distant at the point. He will look over to Hawthorne. Hawthorne will shoot. That was saved by, by Faulkner. Faulkner did not hold on to that puck. That juicy rebound was uh, swept aside. Oh, a quick one-timer to, to uh, who is that, Schutz. Schutz and Hawthorne playing a phenomenal game right now. They, uh, I don't know if they've been on the stat sheet all that much, but there's definitely some one-timer action involving them. Minnesota, uh, Mercyhurst will try and clear it out. They see, can't seem to do it. Grams that chases the puck. Hawthorne will get there first and play it over to Schutz. Hawthorne with it now. He goes over to Distant. Distant will look. Shot, uh, pass can't be blocked, but it will go off of one of the skates of Oswego State, taken by David Gaines. David Gaines still has some juice left. He will try and go through two men. Tries to draw a call. No call. There's no call on the ice. With it now is Oswego State. On the power play for the next 46 seconds, clears it up, and Adam Faulkner will cover. Two words for you. Home job. That should have been a call. David Gaines was hopping through. Definitely got taken down by two guys there. If anything, I would have called that an interference, but definitely the momentum, like I said, Oswego State is picking up on it big time. But as we saw there, Bubbles, Adam Faulkner, was using his head very smartly. 
I don't want to talk about bad officiating. <laughs> With it now is uh, Vardin of the Oswego State Lakers. He will pass it behind the net. That will be taken by Luther. Luthauser, I'm sorry. I'm having flashbacks to the Central Penn game as it goes off of Luthauser. <laughs> Low prick passes it behind. Faulkner didn't play that too well. He had to dive for it. A little slow getting up there. Now taken by Rink. Rink goes behind the net. He will go over to number seven, Kervin. Kervin passes it back to 21, Kennedy. Kennedy goes over to Rink. And will go over the shoulder of Adam Faulkner and in. And it will be tied up here with 4.20 remaining in the second period of play here in Oswego, New York. All right. Uh, hold on. I'm going to wait until that dying seal is done dying. Anyway, um, yes, that goal horn is annoying, but there was just a misread there by Adam Faulkner, who was left all alone to deal with that shot. He really can't be put at fault here. The defense should have cleared that area out, and there should have been nobody standing around in that position there. And that's why we have a tie game 2-2 with 4.20 left in the second period. Face off to be taken by Nick Atkins, and won by Atkins. Now taken by Luthausen. Luthausen will dump it in, played by Faulkner. Faulkner will dump it off to Miranda. Miranda to Hunt. He goes past Zapanski. Now go on into uh, Oswego zone. Warren fighting for it, pushes a man. Then cleared in by Gannon Carr. That'll be offsides if a Mercier's player touches it. I think everyone tagged up, so we're clear now. Now taken by number 14, which is Loprick. Loprick behind his own net, sets up shop. And he will go over to Weimer. Back to Loprick. Luthauser. Luthauser skates up ice. Looks, he will run into Warren, who will steal the puck from him and clear it in. Now taken by Loprick, behind the net once again. Two all here, 324 remaining in the second period of play. Mercier's Lakers versus Oswego State Lakers. Here in Oswego, New York. Taken by Mitchell, he will clear it in, and then we'll go off. Faulkner will play it. That'll be uh, eventually taken by uh, Oswego State. Nobody seems to have a hold on the puck once again, seems to be a bit slippy. Deflected by a couple of Mercier's players in front. Faulkner trying to save it. He can't get a hold on it. But the ref will whistle it down. I guess he lost sight of it. Wow, yeah, uh, the referee lost sight of it. Adam Faulkner lost sight of it. It was just all together may Maylin, or it was mayhem right then and there, just having the puck float from one glove of Mercier's Laker to another glove of Mercier's Laker. It looks like things are definitely changing as far as the power. Uh, the power has shifted over to Oswego State, and they're definitely displaying it here by playing some great in-zone hockey. Faulkner looks a little flustered. He has to get back on his game. Uh, it, it puck would find every glove except for Adam Faulkner. But it was whistled down, and Mercierus will get to clear the zone. It's not going to be iced. It'll instead be taken by Kervin. Kervin behind his own net. He will go over to Clark. Clark looks. Not sure what to do with it. He will take it up ice. Shots ahead of him. No, he will keep it himself. Eventually try to go over to Collins. No such luck. It will eventually go over to Diston. Diston passes it over to Clark. Clark with the puck. Back to Diston. Diston with it. He passes it over. Off the boot of number 17, Collins. Taken by David Gaines. Gaines will flip the puck up. It will be played by Fiden. Diston sets up shot behind the net. He will go over to Rink. Now taken by Clark. The rush coming out. Rink will take it across and will go to Schutz. Schutz over to number 17, Collins. Collins will have his pocket pick. Taken by Rivet over to Gaines. Gaines with the puck. He will shoot it from center ice. 140 remaining in the second period of play. And the Lakers will have a wholesale change. With it now, number 21, Dustin Kennedy. Kennedy looks, he's at his own blue line, can't seem to do anything with it. He will eventually go over to Wilcox, and he'll go clear up into the zone to Schutz. Schutz, two and ahead of him, he's dancing around. That shot will get through to Faulkner. Faulkner will make a pad save, but a juicy rebound goes into the corner. Mercier's can't get it out, as it's stopped by Clark. Now taken by Kennedy. Kennedy has two men on him. 
Nobody can seem to get the puck. That was Lizick, who was trying to fight for it. Kennedy will still have the puck, and he'll go in front. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Kennedy almost had a, a, a easy one-timer. Less than one minute remaining in the second period of play here. Mercier's definitely not on their game right now. They just have to try and wait out this uh, end of the period, much like Oswego State did last period. I've just been very quiet here. I'm just watching this puck float around. Nobody's got control of it except for the Oswego State Lakers. Just definitely a lot of problems here going on. It's ending just like last period did, but this time the game's tied at two. Cruz Lizick all alone. He will go over to Stefanski now who caught up. And that'll go over to Stepanian. Stepanian go, clears it around. Lizick fighting for 22 seconds remaining in the first uh, second period of play. Stepanian keeps it in, but it will go over uh, Weimer. 14 seconds as it's passed up by Mercyhurst. Now with Cruz Lizick at the blue line. Lizick waiting, make sure he's on sides. And he will clear the puck. Five seconds remaining. Clark with it. I think he's just going to sit on it. No, he's going to pass it to the corner, but it's not going to matter. And that'll end the second period of play here in Oswego. John Baranowski here with David Stearns after a rough, rough second period of play here in Oswego State. Well, I, I think that says a lot about your uh, current situation. Why don't you uh, put it in words for us? We all shot them 12 to 11. And there should have been no reason why two goals went in. Careless positioning down low led to them picking up two goals, even though we got one early on in the period. You would think that the momentum would have just shifted and stayed with the Mercier's Lakers throughout the entire period. You would have thought that things would have been shifting in our direction all the way through. But what happened? What happened? Collapses down low. People chasing people on power play situations for the other team it's like when you're on the penalty kill don't chase stay in your box position unless you are confident you're going to get the puck seriously when you get caught down low you're leaving the other three guys that are left behind vulnerable i honestly think that things have to be smartened up as far as special teams go in this next period even though our two goals are on the power play honestly what do you think right now about the goaltending situation because i keep on bringing this up i keep on bringing this up because adam faulkner is getting no help defensively and he's just making, uh, what's his name again? Because he hasn't seen a lot, well, he's seen a lot of action, but not any quality action, and that would be Faden. Faden, he needs to be tested more. Just watching how confused he is compared to Faulkner, what do you think comparing the two goaltenders after that period? Well, it's no contest. Faulkner is off his game right now. He has been shaken. You can tell he, he looks a little depressed, a little down. Uh, playing a, a lot, a lot, a lot of street hockey as a goaltender, I can tell you what it's like to not get a defense. It gets rather depressing after a while. You get frustrated. And right now, that's what's happening to Adam Faulkner. He's frustrated. You can see it. He needs to calm down and really sit himself down and get on his game. I am feeling that frustration, too, but I cannot place all the blame on Adam Faulkner on well, oh, no, not to blame The him. defense should have been down low on that power or penalty kill situation. The defense should have been down low there to cut off that winger who snuck in and roofed it over Adam Faulkner's shoulders. I mean, that shouldn't have happened. Position-wise on defense has to be a lot smarter. But as far as Faden, the way he's playing, do you think he's being tested enough? Do you think he's getting enough quality shots on him? I don't even think the Lakers are crashing the net enough. What do you think? Not at all. All of these shots are dinky shots to be cleared into the zone that happened to hit the net, happened to be counted as a shot. There really hasn't been a, a good scoring chance for Mercy Gerst all period. I mean, sure, there might have been one or two here and there, but nothing worth noting. And I don't mean to blame Faulkner. I'm not blaming Faulkner. This is the defense, and it's getting Faulkner off his game. He has to basically start over. He needs to build himself up as, as you know, the same as he did in pregame, and some people need to come into the locker room and just start yelling at the defense saying, do your job, stay at home, do what you're supposed to do. One thing that does bust my balls, if I may say that, is when David Gaines had the rush in between two defensemen. Honestly, there, if you watch that play over and over, you can see the hook around his torso. You can see the stick around his skate. Why wasn't that called? It really bothers me. If we had fans from our side here, they would obviously make it noted that they are not happy. But I can see the coaching staff was not happy on the bench whatsoever. Tom McKinnon was definitely unhappy with that, as well as I was. Thank God I didn't have a mic on me because I would have been going nuts. Yeah, we would have had to have a couple of bleeps there in post-production. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, that was that was definitely very frustrating. These referees are not calling a, a, a solid game. So it's, it's just all over the place. I mean, we did get lucky on a few chances where we had Whitney Gibbs complete the check where it was very close to a whistle. Honestly, that was kind of pushing it. I'm surprised they didn't call that. But if it was a true home job, I guess they would have called it. But just it doesn't seem like there's a lot of consistency and continuity as far as the calls are being made. And this period was definitely a special teams kind of like display or showcase here. I really think that the Lakers power play is strong, but I think the Oswego State Lakers uh, power play is just as strong and they need to work on keeping themselves out of the box and play smart five on five hockey. That's all you have to do to win this game. One period left. Smart play is the key for the next 20 minutes, which we will begin right after this. And we return for the third period of play here in Oswego, New York. Well, Mercer's Lakers on the road against the Oswego State Lakers. I'm John Baranowski with David Stearns. My blood pressure is still a little high right now. I can feel my head throbbing. I hope that something good happens here where I just kind of float off into an eternal happiness. Lakers better win. But should I predict it now this early? Well, the Lakers are going to win. The question is which one? <laughs> oh, whew, my heart feels better. <laughs> Unless there's a tie, and I don't think that happens in this league. So, uh, what I'm about, there will be a Laker victory. The, the question is, uh, which one? yeah, I'll, I'll be willing to bet on a Laker victory right now. Uh, as I sit and run with that uh, little mistake by my color commentator, that little oversight, Ryan Hawthorne takes the puck, and it is uh, eventually stolen by Matt Warren. That's just how flustered I am right now. Yeah, I can tell. It's uh, obviously been a hard game for you, considering uh, the turn of events in the second period of play. I almost did a Jock Lemaire. I just couldn't find a bench to throw. <laughs> Taken by Schutz. He will go to Warren. Warren dumps it back in, flips it over into the corner. Chased by Kenny Hunt. Kenny Hunt can't get there in time. Hawthorne will deflect the puck and he'll go back into the Oswego territory. Behind the net, I'm trying to tell who that is. That was Luthauser who clears it up. The puck taken now by Miranda after a pass from Gannon Carr who picked it up. Miranda with it again. He looks to be creating some offense. He won't be able to do so. He kind of rolled off his stick. Gannon Carr won't let Faulkner play it. He said he will take it and pass it over to Revit, who didn't have a stick on the ice for that one. And that will be whistled for an icing. 18.40 remaining in the game. Well, the shot count being here, 29 to 24, almost 60 shots overall. Unbelievable. I, I've seen a lot of flurries here, but I'm not sure if the, uh, the guys that are doing shot count have gotten every single shot that was pretty much poured onto Adam Faulkner. That's why I'm saying the shots might actually be a little bit lopsided, but not lopsided enough. Face off one by the Mercier's Lakers. Revit took the puck all the way into uh, Oswego territory. Now picked up by a myriad of Lakers. Uh, I, I believe now that's Whitney Gibbs. Whitney Gibbs will put it on net. The rebound will be picked up by Wilcox. He will push it up to LaPaglia. <laughs> As two men went over him, it was kind of like a little wave thing. It looked like something out of the uh, circus. Take it now. Weimer pushes it up. Faulkner will play it. I think he captured it just right. A circus. That's what it is right now. Three periods, three rings. We will find out what goes on in this last act. It's a three-ring circus. And wow, those guys up there in the stands. Obviously, I think that was that one guy's roommate. Just not like last night's guy uh, who admitted to number five being his roommate after Marty beat him down. I wouldn't admit to that. <laughs> right now it is taken by Clark. He will go over. No, it wouldn't matter. The Lake, uh, Mercyhurst will take it. I keep slipping up and saying the Lakers. Again, I'm a little flustered also. Now taken by Mitchell. Mitchell will pass it up. Stefanski will eventually get possession of it. He looks for an opening. He can't seem to get by Atkins. Cameron will play it, and he'll go over to Stepanian. And now over to Odell. Odell will clear it, and it'll go all the way to the goal. But Fiden won't play it, and it'll be whistled for icing. 17.09 remaining. I don't like the fact that they cut down the creases in these leagues. I mean, international play still uses the full creases. But I wonder, is there a rule involving icing? If it goes through the blue, it gets called off. I honestly, I don't know. No, uh, uh, cameraman signaling no. Cameraman says no. Cameraman knows all. All right. The face-off will be taken by Stefanski. 
It'll be won by Stefanski. Tonight we will keep the cameraman's identity a secret. As long as he's doing a good job, if not, we will be revealing that secret next game. So stay tuned. Faulkner will play it behind the net over to Gramza. Grams is setting up shop. He will go over to Stepanian. Stepanian tries to go around Distant, but it's now taken by Romano. Romano in deep to, to uh, Atkins. Seeing a lot of fresh players on the ice, and I, I mean fresh players who haven't played a lot so far this game, for the Oswego State Lakers. Gramsa will play it back to Stepanian. I'm sorry, that, that's uh, Scherer, 18 and 19. Again, I'm having trouble with that, that little teeny line. The uh, Carolina Hurricanes font used by the Mercier's Lakers is a little tough to see. Once again, the referees are not paying attention what's going on behind the play. I just saw Matt Saramac take out number 19, Steve Stepanian, along the boards. The puck wasn't even over there. What is the referee watching? Probably not a hockey game. L uh, Lothauser will clear it in. He'll be played by Faulkner and eventually Scherer. Passed across and Hawthorne would not get his opportunity to put it in on the one-timer. But that pass to uh, Leon will be foiled. He will win the battle over the goaltender. But that doesn't mean it's a goal as it's still in the corner. Now taken. Now eventually taken by Kenny Hunt. He will try and push it in front, but there's nobody there except for a host of Oswego players. Now taken by Hawthorne. Hawthorne looks, drives to the net. He'll eventually go off to Warren, who will clear it out to Leon. Leon will pass it up. Kenny Hunt wasn't ready for it, and he'll be uh, whistled for icing. Once again, those tape-to-tape -tape passes, they're not happening. They need to happen because there was two opportunities in a row here where somebody is floating up center ice. Easily breakaways. Where are they? Not tape-to-tape. -tape. Now we got icings. Shot count, uh, there either haven't been any shots in the first four and a half minutes of play or uh, the guy who tallies the shot counts is uh, taking a nap. As I think he's sleeping. He's sleeping. Has to be. Now Leon will pass it forward. It'll be played by Faden. Hunt with the puck. He will look, he'll pass it up to, uh, who was that? That is, uh, I can't tell, oh, that's Leon, I'm sorry. I couldn't see that second digit. The shot count guy is not asleep. He did get that last shot. 15 minutes remaining in the game, all tied up at two between Oswego State and Mercy Earth, both the Lakers. Goes over to Leon in front. Leon tries the one time, it wouldn't go to a stick, went off his skate instead, and then behind the net. Now picked up by Schutz. Pass goes through over to Hawthorne. Hawthorne looks again off the far wing. And he uh, will be uh, dumped out by Mercyhurst. That will be mirrored back by Wilcox, played by Faulkner. And now taken by Carr. Carr with the puck. He will dance around a few of his own players. But he can't seem to get it. Oh, and uh, Revit will get it back. He will push it up into the far zone. That will be picked up by Clark. LaPaglia with it now. He is roughed off the puck by Stefanski, who doesn't have a stick anymore. Gaines will pass it up. Oh, and the Rabbit will hit hard. Dustin Kennedy. Whitney gives with the puck. He passes it up. Eventually, he'll be shot back to Odell. Odell will clear this time. Played by, who is that, Fiden. Clark getting tied up on the far boards. We have uh, Loprick. Played off the boards is LaPaglia. He will go over to Kennedy. Kennedy will look for a man. Oh, no, he will dance through David Gaines. LaPaglia, uh, he has plenty of time. That Dustin Kennedy guy is a little bit fancy, but a little too fancy. He doesn't get any results there. Definitely making himself kind of look flush, flustered afterwards after he realized he didn't do anything with all those nice little moves. Whitney Gibbs gave a wave over to him. Clark in his own zone in the far corner. He will pass it up to Rink. Rink will try to go over to Caravan. Eventually go through and Lakers will pick it up. That's Odell who cleared it out of the zone. They'll eventually take him by Luthauser. Luthauser in front, he will go across and eventually the change will be picked up by Saramac. Haven't gotten to say that name too often. He hasn't touched the puck much. Blake Camlin playing defense will set up behind his own net. Two male man on each side coming in on him, and he did the uh, desperation move and cleared it around the court of, uh, near boards. Stepanian was roughed off the puck by Luthauser. And that'll go up to Kervin. Kervin to Odell. Stefanski. Odell. Petey had a sweetie hit there, and oh, he just took somebody almost into the bench. 
That was number seven, Brad Curvin. Oswego will clear it all the way up to Ben O'Dell. We'll take the puck now and then dump it in as he crosses the red line. That'll be uh, taken by Luthauser, the captain of Oswego State. Zeron tries to push it forward. Romano will take it now. This is uh, one of the lines lesser used by Oswego State. Will be uh, shot quickly by Romano. Will be saved. Another shot by Loprick. Baby and Loprick pushes. Uh, <laughs> Faulkner got pushed into his own net. I wasn't sure where the puck was. It dribbled out behind the net. Thank goodness. I think about Wilcox. I blame that one on high ceilings. With it, Odell and Zoran fight for it. I think Odell comes out with that puck. Yes, he does, but he doesn't have control of it. Will be pushed back to Mitchell. He seemed a little confused. That puck actually went seriously about 30 feet, 40 feet in the air. Yeah, that definitely was a high shot. Zoran with a huge slap shot. That'll be swapped aside by Faulkner. With an Owls Mitchell. Mitchell cleared up again with the high shots. The uh, Hail Mary passes, as it were, of the Oswego State Lakers. Now played by number 13 in the corner. That's Jordan Romano. And he will go over to uh, Lothauser. I'm sorry, that's Saramac. Now played by uh, Warren. Matt Warren on the breakaway. He looks. He has an opening. He will shoot it in right through the five hole of Gregory Fiden. Like I was saying before, folks, I was a little flustered. And these passes weren't going tape to tape. That one went tape to tape. Matt Warren went in, burned the goalie. And there we go, three to two. My blood pressure is down. I feel happy. The 26th shot for the Mercer's Lakers of this game was put in by number 26, Matt Warren. 10.54 remaining in the game. The Mercer's Lakers are up three to two over the Lakers of Oswego State. Face-off eventually won by Mercyhurst, and that'll be shot in by Revit. Pushed behind the net. With it, Clark. He looks for an opening. He'll eventually take it up off the far side, and he will try and go to Hawthorne. Oh, and then Collins smashes. Who was that? Whitney Gibbs. Gibbs got uh, pushed a little hard. It looks like he will try and return the favor against Clark. He, he didn't line himself up right there, and he couldn't get it off. However, the uh, Mercier seems to be set up. David Gaines trying to replace Gibbs. Whitney Gibbs has been all over the ice right now and not of his own accord. He has been severely roughed up the target of this team. They must have done some scouting and decided he was the key man. Well, it looks like uh, Wesley Gibbs there got roughed up quite a bit in the corner by number nine, Brandon Clark. But let me just tell you, they are targeting him because he is one of the most physical guys on the team along with Peterson and that checking line with Charlie Rive. Yes, Whitney Gibbs has definitely been a, a man of target. He has uh, been processed many times here by Oswego State. Peterson goes for the puck. No, Gramza will play it instead as Peterson decides to push aside. A lot of uh, fighting for it now. Collins trying to get the puck, as is Jamie Schutz from Peterson and Stefanski. Eventually, Oswego State will come out with it, but Gramsville will take it right off of him. And now it is eventually taken by Oswego. That's Loprick, Fabian Loprick with a booming shot. They'll go off the pad. And again with another shot, another pad save. Another big rebound, but it is swept away by the Mercer's Lakers. I'm surprised that the Oswego State Lakers didn't get a goal there. I mean, Pat Shurer needs to clear out the front of the net. Tying up the guy doesn't mean leave him in front of Adam Faulkner. It means get him the heck out of the way so Faulkner can see the shot. Fabian Loprick, the German, chases down the puck, and he will get it to Luthauser. Nicholas Luthauser will pass it up, eventually be taken by the Lakers. Stefanski turns around at the other blue line, two on two. Stefanski looks, he shoots into the breadbasket, rebound taken, shot. Another rebound shot. No, none of them will get through. None of them will get to the net. Oh, it'll go in! It will go in! The referee has signaled! Punch it enough times, and it will eventually go in. How the... How the heck did that puck get in there? I don't know, but everybody just kept whacking away at it, whacking away at it. We don't know who got this goal, but I don't know. Wow, I'm just surprised. My heart, it's racing with joy. My blood pressure, it's down, and I am happy. The Lakers are up 4-2. to two. Mercyhurst is indeed up 4-2, to two, as my color commentator struggles to contain himself. If you all saw the second intermission, you know how angry I was? Right now, I could just hug everybody in sight. I will inch away slowly. <laughs> oh, come here, you. <laughs> well, <laughs> Wilcox goes over to, uh, I'm sorry, that was Mitchell. Mitchell will pass it up to Weimer. 
Cleared in by Kennedy. Uh, Faulkner couldn't get there in time to play it, and it'll be taken by Oswego. Carl will try and toss it around. Kennedy will get there first, though. Nobody really has much possession of the puck. Uh, every time someone gets it, they get to be pinned by, on the boards, or they get it taken away from them right quick. Pushed in. Miranda with the puck now for a few seconds. That'll go out of play. 8.23 remaining in the game. The Mercer's Lakers are up 4-2. Well, I don't know what to say here, but uh, quite exciting hockey right now. But the uh, the Oswego State Lakers are actually kind of trying to trap the Mercier's Lakers in the zone there, try to get some scoring opportunities before it gets late. But the time is running out on them right now. 8.20 left, but they got plenty of time to at least generate one or two goals here. I'm a little nervous to see what can be done here. We have never seen this team before. We don't know how they face adversity. A number of players fighting for it. Warren with it, the latest player to touch the puck. He will pass it up to... Uh, of Leon is eventually tossed back into the Mercier's zone, played by Gannon Carr. The unit passes it around the far corner, eventually be taken by Kenny Hunt, who will push it forward. I think that will hit the net. Uh, it is whistled. I'm not sure for what. We, uh, looks like we have a penalty come up here to Oswego State. We got an elbowing at number 16, who is Timothy Rink. I didn't see where the elbow happened, but obviously it happened behind the play because I was looking to see where Matt Warren would go as picking up the puck as it was heading towards the Oswego net. Well, I'm not going to fault the referees for that one. I thought maybe an errant icing or uh, maybe I missed a two-line pass. I wasn't exactly sure there. Well, the power play has been hot so far for Mercyhurst. Let's see if they can generate a third power play goal here with 7.49 left in the third period. For the next two minutes, the Lakers will be up five on four. The faceoff one, it goes back to Odell. Odell looks at the point. He will go inside to Revit, who will shoot. The rebound in front. Nobody could push it in. Puck cleared out by number 11, Jamie Schutz. Chased down by Blake Cameron. Chasing it hard is Saramac. He hasn't been seen much on the ice so far, but it uh, looks like he's going to play on this PK. Taken now by Revit. Revit with the puck. Gibbs beside him. David Gaines will chase it now as he tosses it in towards the corner. Looks like it'll be stopped by Odell. Kept in again by Whitney Gibbs. Whitney Gibbs will set up shop. He is being slashed and pushed by a stick. I wasn't sure who the player was. Odell with it now. He will fake the shot and go over to Gaines. Gaines looks for the open man. He won't find one. Eventually we'll toss it out to Odell who shoots. That rebound will go all the way around the corner and out to Blake Cameron. Cameron was uh, being roughed up hard by uh, Saramac. Two on one for Oswego State. Played well by Odell, who forced him, forces the player into the corner. 6.37 remaining in the game. 47 seconds on the power play for Mercyhurst. Mercyhurst has to be careful on this. Blake Cameron with the puck now, and he will toss it off to Ben Odell. Odell passes it around the inboards. Stefanski chases after it. He got his stick stuck in Richard Collins. The fans, he's getting a penalty there for tripping up number 17 of the Oswego State Lakers, Richard Collins. And it looked like uh, Collins could have had a clear break going in one-on-one uh, -on -one with the remaining defenseman that was on that side. But now we got four-on-four -four hockey. And you know what I was saying earlier is four-on-four -four hockey seems to swing in you know, favor of Oswego State. We'll have to wait and see here what happens for the next 28 seconds before Oswego State goes on a power play. Yeah, that is indeed the worst part of this, that Oswego will have a minute and 32 on the power play. The clock has finally started up, 6.13 remaining in the game. Mercier's up 4-2 here in Oswego, New York. Behind the net, who is that? That is Scherer. Scherer, not sure where to go. He will go back behind the net and eventually go off to Kenny Hunt. In front, Hawthorne stole it, second shot, oh! And it will go over his glove and into the net. Bringing Oswego within one with 5.56 remaining. It's quite unfortunate that it didn't happen seven seconds later, you know, because considering the fact I'd much rather have them have a power play goal now instead of a four-on-four -four goal. But like I said, they're strong in the four-on-four, -four, but the defense could not just get it up on the boards to get it out of the zone and open up this game. Just throwing the puck in front of the net so carelessly like that, you really have to rethink where you're going with the puck next time because next time could be the last time leading into a 4-4 game. But right now, we'll have to see 4-3. to three. We're still in the lead. Brian Hawthorne has been a name uttered many times tonight. He has touched the puck on almost every play. 
He has been a star player for Oswego State, and that's why he's advertised on. They sold the bottom of his jersey to the uh, uh, Clubhouse Lounge, which I believe is a local tavern, the local bar and grill. I was thinking about selling some space on my head if I shaved my head, but if I leave the mullet on, I can leave an advertisement right underneath the mullet. Uh, there will be another whistle. Looks like there will be another penalty. I didn't get to see it. That's going to be uh... We just had an offsides there. Apparently it squeaked out over the line, but I don't know. Too close of a call. I honestly thought it was still in the zone, even though I was talking about my mullet at the time. But, um, yeah, okay. Back to you, John. 526 remaining in the game. I'm John Baranowski with David Stearns, the mullet man now. He's going for Barry Melrose look eventually. Matt Warren with the puck. He will pass it over to Miranda. Miranda will clear it. And uh, that, no, I'm sorry, they're on the PK, so that won't be icing because he definitely shot that from behind his own red line. His own red, the only red line. With it is Jamie Shots. I guess it's everyone's red line. Shots with it. Still, he looks, and he will go off the far boards over to Weimer. Weimer goes to Mitchell. Mitchell looks. He will go over to Distin. Distin goes over to Hawthorne, the dangerous man who was advertised on. Hawthorne again, he shoots, and that'll be an arm save on the blocker side for Adam Falcon. Shuts with it behind the net, and it'll be cleared out by Mercyhurst the whole way around. 24 seconds remaining on the penalty to the Mercyhurst Lakers. 4.38 left in the game. There was a debatable trip there by uh, Stepanian. Looks like that was incidental, though. Uh, it'll be cleared out. Stepanian with it now, two on one. To his side, he has gains. He can't get it over to him. Now he will run out of space. Real estate closed real fast there. Why isn't a whistle being blown? That net was knocked off by the goaltender on that rush. Odell with it. Five on five hockey now. 4 11 remaining in the game. Uh, Mercier's Lakers are up 4 to 3. Stepania will clear it. That will be a quick shot gloved by Faden. He will pass it off to the side. He's trying to keep this game going with four minutes remaining. His team needs one goal to tie and force overtime. The shot's 38 to 33 in favor of Oswego State. As my color commentator kneels in prayer right now, I think that's prayer or else he's really, really nervous. Well, he, he claims both as Brandon Clark sets up shop and he will go over to Kervin. Kervin works past the red line. He will go over to number 22, which is Atkins. Atkins will pass it behind the net. Chasing it is Rink. Warren will be checked by Rink. Kervin fighting for it, and he will eventually get it out to Clark. Clark will look, shoot, that will get through to Faulkner. He will make the pad save. Uh, Lakers have a chance here. That's uh, Mercier's Lakers. Stefanski punches it through. 3.14 remaining in the game. Looks like Coach Tom McKinnon will have short shifts for his players, trying to keep everyone uh, uh, have enough juice to uh, keep going and play proper defense. Three minutes left in the game. Lakers up by one. Mercyhurst, Lakers up by one. Graham's a chasing. I'm sorry, no, that must be Camlin. Whitney Gibbs going for it. But right now that's taken by Kennedy. Kennedy goes in deep to LaPeglia. LaPeglia's pass will go all the way into his own zone. There was nobody there waiting at the blue line for it, so that definitely helps out the Lakers a little bit to finish off the change with their defensemen. Their defensemen were looking a little fatigued out there. Lucky for them, Oswego State kind of gave a big turnover in a different way. Revan will stop the puck and he will look and he will try to go over to Peterson but he won't get there. With it now is LaPeglia. Right now Dustin Kennedy he crosses the blue line. It will be hit by Scherer and the puck will be pushed out. 2-10 left. I'm sitting here getting a little nervous. I mean I thought, you know, a two-goal lead was a great cushion, especially since that this game has not been really uh, really wide open for anybody in particular. But just seeing as 39 to 33 in shots, the guys are counting shots. Not many shots this period for both sides. It's been kind of opened up a little bit, but now we're probably going to see a flurry of shots come from Oswego State. With it now, are the Mercier Lakers? No, that'll be stolen by Oswego. Wilcox shot will be saved in the chest pad of... Faulkner. I don't know if they have an acting program here, but I'd like to recommend Jamie Schutz, number 11, after that nice little shove by Pat Shearer to knock him over. But the referee agrees. That was great acting. Wow, and the fans don't like that either. They're threatening us. All right, racing is Leon. Leon always a, a player with a lot of fire. Taken by Shearer now. Shearer will clear it up. Warren was in the zone, and now he will tag up. 
Taken by Wilcox, up to Hawthorne, who will be stymied at the blue line. And Gramza will chase it over to, uh, will chase Shuts for it, Hawthorne with it. He will pass it up to Wilcox. Wilcox will try to go over to Hawthorne, but it'll be uh, deflected. Mercyhurst will pass it up to, out of the zone. That's Leon with it. Leon waits for Warren to get out of the zone. He will end up giving it right to Hawthorne. Hawthorne, the skating billboard, chases into the zone. Gramza picks his pocket. He will try and clear it out, and he will eventually do so. Leon with it, two men ahead of him, but he will have an opportunity to get it. He'll take a shot, he will score! Oh, holy crap! I have no special saying for that one. Um, thank God I didn't crap my pants there because that was one amazing shot by Pat Leon from the outside. Two goal lead, back in again, five to three. Shots 40 to 34, wow. I'm just looking at the score clock and reading everything off it because I am in disbelief. Faden, plain and simple, got beat. Uh, he, he didn't look like he misplayed it. He looked maybe he, he wasn't quite ready for it, but it, he, he played it the way he probably should have. I think we're getting uh, the evil eye after I jumped over there. We have a bunch of Oswego fans that are, like, shouting obscenities. I wonder if we can get them on tape. Maybe their mom would like to hear that. So uh, maybe our cameraman at some point will take a nice little pan over to them. Uh, well, whenever there's a break in the action, maybe one of these next icing calls. A minute nine, says the clock. Maybe we can interview them and find out exactly what they said. Yeah, evidence is on tape. <laughs> one minute remaining in the game. Mercyhurst is up 5-3 to three over Oswego State. For a while there, there was a lot of tension. I was reminded of the movie Miracle. 4-3, to three, the uh, U.S. was over the Soviet Union at the time. But interference, there was uh, Atkins on, uh, I'm sorry, Charlie Rabbit. 43.4 seconds on the clock in the third period of play here in Oswego, New York. Atkins was trying to force his diet onto Charlie Rivet, who was down on the ice. He had him in a headlock net and tried to wrestle him down, but now Oswego State will call timeout and try to organize something to get two goals, two quick goals with 43.4 seconds left. Now, uh, keying off the Syracuse game, which was played yesterday, and you saw it all on Tuesday here on television, uh, the timeout seemed to favor the Lakers a lot. Because after all, Syracuse took that timeout. Right, right. I know what you mean. Uh, Mercier's called their first or their timeout first, and that was a little bit earlier in the third, and they got a goal right off the bat from that. Syracuse went to call a timeout, and then next thing you know it, Mercyhurst comes in with a goal immediately. So uh, I guess maybe this game can be a six to three. I'm not sure if uh, the or uh, yeah, I was going to say Syracuse. I'm not sure if Oswego State is going to take that chance to pull the goalie. But when they have the puck inside of the Mercyhurst zone, they do apply a lot of pressure. You have to admit there have been some lucky chances, uh, lucky in our favor as Mercyhurst side, that that puck didn't find its way into the net. So we're going to have to see if they pull the goalie, which they probably will, with 43.4 seconds left. But the faceoff is down on their end, so it's going to take some time to get that puck out of there to begin with. And I guess I have to give the credit to Coach Tom McKinnon for using that time wisely. Don't you find that goalie's helmet a little bit distracting there and the pads? Everything's so yellow about him. I, I get it. Well, if the Oakland Seals were around today, the California Golden Seals, I guess that's what it would look like as he wears the... Uh, Yellow and green RBKs, which are disgusting on many, many, many levels. With it, Diston clears it in. Goalie comes off. Six players for the Oswego State Lakers. With it now is Diston. He will clear it in. He goes to Kennedy. Kennedy in front. Hawthorne trying to push it in. Hawthorne will score. One, two shots. The third time was a charm there. 19.4 seconds remaining in this game. If Mercyhurst was able to keep it inside the Oswego State zone, they would not have had that chance to pull the goalie out. But now, with that goalie that was out at that point, having six players putting a lot of that pressure on Adam Faulkner, Adam Faulkner just could not hold on any longer, and he just let one slide by him. Now they got their goalie back in net. After they get it back into the Mercyhurst zone, I guarantee he's going to be gone, and there's going to be a lot more pressure for the remaining time that's going to be left. David Gaines couldn't win that faceoff, and it will be cleared in by Oswego, and the goalie will come off. 13 seconds in the game. Odell trying to get there. Kennedy in front of him. It'll be stolen by Hawthorne. Hawthorne shoots. That'll go wide. Into the far corner. Chasing it is Luthauser. Luthauser will clear it in successfully. It goes over to Shuts. Shuts to Hawthorne. Hawthorne tries to clear it in. And the game won! The game won right before the goal puck went into that! Oh, the game tied goal came seconds after the whistle! And they still blew the goal horn, but that, we can review it on tape, it did not cross the line. 
in time. The clock already ran out before that shot was released. The Mercyhurst Lakers win this one 5-4 to four with a hard stopper at the end. And let me tell you, I am elated right now. This was one heck of a game all around. A lot of things that need to be fixed. But hey, like I said last night, a W is a W. And as the rest of your Slakers win by the skin of their teeth, we're going to let the emotions subside, and we will join you for the post-game show right after this. I'm John Baranowski here with Pat Leone, who had the uh, game-winning goal out there. Uh, what was going on out there? Uh, how, how did it set up? Uh, I just flew the zone. Maddie passed up to me. Went in, saw the guy was coming at me, so I just threw it at the net, and sometimes you get lucky and, I guess, caught the goalie off guard. And I always, I always comment on uh, during the games how much of a, a hard player you are, how you always play with, uh, with fire, as I like to call it. Uh, do you think that spreads to the team? you think that helps out? Uh, how do you do it in these tough situations sometimes? Uh, well, I, ho I hope it helps the team, but uh, I just work as hard as I can and you know, sometimes come out with puck, sometimes I don't. All right, and uh, what are your thoughts going into the next game, going into the practice Monday, which uh, a lot of things, I guess, to work on? Yeah, uh, you know, it's nice to get two road wins, but we have to work hard all week. And uh, I'm not really sure who we play next weekend, but it should be two good games, and hopefully we can get the two wins. All right. Well, thank you very much. Yep. I'm joined now by Brian Stefanski. Brian, what a game out there. How did you feel under the pressure of having that game just pretty much flip-flop amongst, you know, the scoreboard there? I mean, you go up 2 to nothing, and then go at the end of the second, tied 2-2. Two to two. What was the mentality coming into the third period? Well, we knew we just had to keep skating. Uh... We felt that we were in better shape and that we could just wear them down if we kept hustling to the puck. And we beat them to loose pucks and took uh, care of opportunities. What do you think is going to be stressed on going into this week with practices and that? Uh, were there any kind of things that you think really stood out to Coach McKinnon and what needs to be worked on as far as the team building goes at this point? Um, I think we need to do a better job in the defensive zone, getting the puck out of the zone and also coverage. Where we get letting a lot of guys get free and then when we get the puck, we turn it back over to them right away. So that lessens our offensive chances, and it hurts us defensively as well. What's the morale? Uh, let me just ask you one more question. What is the morale right now coming off a big weekend, two wins in a row? How do you guys feel going into the home opener next weekend against John Carroll? Well, the road wins are always tough, but it's good to get a couple road wins under the belt and have some good momentum going into these two home games and get the crowd behind us. So hopefully we'll uh, carry this on and keep being undefeated. Okay, thank you. Brian Stefanski. I'm John Barnowski, as always, with David Stearns. To wrap up this game, uh, a big win for the Mercyhurst Lakers here in Oswego as someone comes through the elevator that we uh, happen to go right in front of. This could be a problem. I think we're uh, going to cut this part. No, no, we're not. No, never mind. All right, no, no one's in the elevator. There's the a ghost elevator. elevator. We have a ghost elevator, but uh, I don't know. What a game. What a game. <laughs> This whole post-game wrap-up just reflects exactly what happened in the game. That was crazy. Absolutely crazy. It was just complete discombobulation on both sides. Everybody was running around on the ice. The opportunities were on equal on both sides, I believe. But the Mercyhurst Lakers prevailed, even under the pressure that they were in, with 19.5 seconds left when the uh, uh, Oswego State Lakers scored that fourth goal. Unbelievable how everybody just kind of reacted to that. It was a bit of a panic atmosphere, I believe. But I think that the Mercyhurst Lakers' morale and their strong character. That's what this weekend's been all about, building character. These guys have molded together as a team, and it sh certainly showed going into the last few seconds of the game even. All right, you've always obviously been the real emotional uh, guide track, I guess you could say, of, of this game, uh, coming in from that second intermission where you were obviously a little uh, miffed. Uh, well, we don't know what's going on in the locker room. I was kind of recreating it out here because I know there's a lot of frustration. You go up two to nothing, you're expecting, all right, now we have to play smart and don't get any penalties. Stay out of the box for sure because, you know, special teams right now, it's still early in the season. These guys don't know how to work with each other. But boy, oh boy, when you had Brian Stefans get there, Pat Leone, and you had Matt Warren, Gibbs with his physical play, unbelievable all around. This team is really coming together quite nicely. The Lakers did indeed come together, and uh, hopefully they will reflect that in practice and in next week. All right. Well, I guess that's going to wrap this uh, wrap this game up after uh, a, a crazy, crazy game on all counts. <laughs> it's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm sure we'll uh, see you many times. Uh, tune in next week. It should be Tuesday uh, here on Hearst TV. There will be a game. Uh, is it a home game next week, Saturday? Home game against John Carroll to start things off, and then Youngstown State the following night. So Friday and Saturday at the ice rink at Mercer's College. Be there. After which you can catch it here on Hearst TV Tuesday and then Thursday. I'm John Baranowski with David Stearns. Good night, everybody.